here we are. We're at the finish line. Final exam. <sighs> Finally, right? All right, be sure you realize that it's over the entire course, okay? So you want to go back. The, the best way to review the entire course is to go back and review your test, okay? So review test number one, test number two, um, all homework assignments, uh, test one review, test two review. If you review all of this, you'll be fine with chapters one through five. Okay, so be sure and go back and review. Um, chapter six of so this last material, uh, let's say we wanted to come up with a confidence interval and they've actually given me the population standard deviation. So remember when you're given that, then you know you're going to use um, the Z critical value. So if you wanted to do this by hand, the margin of error is the critical value times the standard deviation over the square root of the sample size. There's what, 15 people here. And so this is the how long it takes them to read a newspaper. And so our confidence interval would be the sample mean. So it looks like I need the sample mean minus this error and then plus this error. So the first thing I do is I go to my table and I see that I want a 90% confidence interval. So I'm going to use my critical value of 1.645. There's the 1.8 square root of 15. 9.33 just magically appeared. How did I get that? I added up all of those values and divided by 15. Okay, so I found the, found the mean and that gives me my actual interval. All right, so that's how you do it by hand. If you wanted to use StatCrunch, you would go um, open the data. So you click on this thing right here to open the data in, in StatCrunch. And then you'd uh, click Stat with data, one, or I'm sorry, a Z, one sample with data because you're actually given data here. I mean, pretty much you're going to see everything you're going to do is going to be under this stat. You just have to know, is it a Z or a T? And so then from here, just click on var one, variable one. So it moves it over there. So you're selecting it and then be sure and change your confidence interval here about the mean of 90%. And you'll see by your output, you get the same answer. If you want to do it with a calculator, uh, you can, the first thing you have to do, only, my only issue with calculators is I'm just a little slow. You guys with your thumbs and, you know, doing your phones and stuff may not, it may not be a big deal to you, but you have to put all the numbers, okay, so your data in the calculator first. So edit, um, stat, edit, edit, and then type in all the values. And then after you get all the values typed in, do stat test. We want a Z interval. So again, technology can do everything for you, but you have to know what you want it to do, right? How do you know it's a Z? Because we know the population standard deviation. Um, go in here, say that I actually have data. I have it in list one. Put your population standard deviation, put your confidence level that blacked out, but that says calculate and press enter and you get the same interval. So it just depends on what you're more comfortable with. Um, some people like to do it by hand, right? The first way, um, many tend to, you know, I've, I'm starting to get many more liking stat crunch a lot because it's very straightforward. But then, it, you know, there's a lot of students that just like that. You just love that. There's my calculator, just love my calculator. I mean, you bought it, you paid for it, you might as well use it, right? All right. Uh, here's a 99% confidence interval, says the following data um, represents a concentration of dissolved organic carbon collected from 20 samples, okay, assume it's normally distributed, okay, why am I doing a T? I don't see anywhere in here it gives me a population standard deviation. So I'm going to have to find the sample mean of this data and the sample standard deviation, okay, if you wanted to do this by hand. I need a T critical value, which means I go to the T table, and I look at the degrees of freedom, which is 20 minus 1. Remember, it's just a sample size minus 1, 19. This is um, 
the area in two tails, I didn't show the whole table, but the area in two tails, 0 0.01, because it's 1 minus the 0 0.99, and I get 2.861, which is my critical values. So I actually found the population mean, our population mean, the sample mean of this data, 17.68, just looked up the critical value. I had to find the standard deviation. Okay, so I found that. Um, and then the square root of the sample size. So these you can find in StatCrunch. You can go to the calculator in StatCrunch and tell it to give you the summary stats if you want to do this manually. And then I get this answer. I can go through and do the same thing in StatCrunch. Exactly like the Z, just be sure you um, select T. Okay, one sample with data, and you get the same thing. I'm about to sneeze. Um, calculator, again, same thing. Just be sure you put type, I mean, can you imagine typing all that data in your calculator? I did, and so I typed all that in there, but then you go to stats, test, T, interval, your data, and the only thing you'll have to change is the 0.99. The only good thing about the calculator is then if it asks you, and some of these questions do, they'll say, okay, well now what if it's a 95% confidence interval? Well, you already have the data in there, so all you have to do is come in here and change that number. Okay, uh, how do you find a sample size? Um, there is a sample size formula, so we want to estimate the HDL cl cl cholesterol. <laughs> I can't say that. Uh, this morning. All right, um, how many subjects are needed within three points? So that's my error. 99% confidence, assuming the population standard deviation is 15.5. Okay, and then we're going to come back and do the same thing with a 90%. So notice everything I plugged in, 2.58. Where did I get that number from? Because it says 99%. So 99%, 2.58, um, 15.5, 3, and so multiply the top, divide by 3, then square in that order. And you always round up, always. Don't mathematically round. Um, the way I always think about it is why not just go get one more sample to be really sure, right? And that's what you're doing. Okay, and so here are the 90%, 90%, 1.645. Everything else stays the same. And certainly you can see with the 99%, you have to go get more people, right? You want to be more sure, okay? And so that's going to be a larger sample. All right, hypothesis testing. The length of time in years it took a random sample of 32 former smokers to quit smoking permanently are listed here below. I think I did this on a homework video. I feel like I've done this already, but let's do it again. Assume the population standard deviation is 5.6. Assume the population standard deviation, z-test. Uh, we're going to test this at an alpha of 0 0.04 to see if we want to reject the claim um, that the mean time it takes smokers to quit smoking permanently is 13 years. So the null in this case is the claim that they say it takes 13 years. And there's nothing greater than or less than, so the alternative would just be not equal, okay? That it's either below or that it's above. So we find our test statistic. We take our sample mean. How did I get that? I had to find the sample mean of this data. You didn't give it to me. I had to find it. And then minus the null divided by the population standard deviation over the square root of the sample size. And I get 1.53. So what I want to know and here in a picture is if I look up 1.53 in this table, 1.5 and then under 3, I get 0 0.9370. But remember, that's the area from the bottom all the way up to this value. I want this area, so I have to do 1 minus this value. And notice this times 2. Why? Because I'm cutting off the bottom end. Remember, this was a two-tail test. How do you know it's a two-tail test? Because the alternative was not equal. So if you have a two-tail test, then you have to multiply whatever value you look up in the table by 2, and we would fail to reject the null. Why? Because this is my p-value. My p-value is greater than my alpha, 
Okay, so when the P is high, the no will fly, right? So we fail to reject. There is not sufficient evidence to reject the claim that the mean time it takes smokers to quit smoking is permanently 13 years. Um, you can do this in Stack Crunch. Okay, just click on the, the side button right here to open the data in Stat Crunch. Be sure you select your column. Also, be sure you put the standard deviation, so the population standard deviation, and then finally change these values here. Okay, so just a quick way um, to get the p-value. And this gives you directly the p-value. This will directly give you that value. You won't have to multiply it by 2. And or you can use your calculator. Once again, you'd have to go put the data in your calculator um, and be sure the null 13 population standard deviation. You're in that first list if that's where yours is and then not equal and calculate. Once again, this directly gives you the actual p-value. OK, so no need to multiply by two. All right, this last stuff um, we just covered, okay, so this is kind of the very end of the course. So instead of just redoing the same videos, I thought, well, go play back the used car dealer, okay? That'll show you how to do the t-test. I mean, it's going to be the same thing if you're using technology. You just select t. And then finally, we ended with correlation and regression, and I got two good videos there. Um, if you have any questions, any other, you know, homework problems, missed test questions, anything else you want to see me work, you know where to find me. And good luck on your final exam.